Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on Wednesday the 26th of October. It's lovely to be back with you again um, and this morning um, we commemorate Alfred the Great. And just for a small amount of background, um, Alfred the Great was born in 849 AD and was King of Wessex. And Wessex uh, is southwest, in the southwest in um, modern day England. And Alfred the Great died on the 26th of October this day um, in 899 AD. And he was particularly known uh, amongst many, many um, ventures uh, and achievements as defender against Viking invasion. And he was a social reformer. So that's Alfred the Great, who we remember today. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. So let us be quiet for a moment as we come before God this morning. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I'm now going to read Psalm 112, which I think is a beautiful psalm. And the refrain is, the righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance. Alleluia. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commands, commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land, a generation of the faithful that will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house and their righteousness endures forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright, gracious and full of compassion are the righteous. It goes well with those who are generous in lending and order their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil tidings. Their heart is steadfast trusting in the Lord. Their heart is sustained and will not fear until they see the downfall of their foes. They have given freely to the poor. Their righteousness stands fast forever. Their head will be exalted with honour. The wicked shall see it and be angry. They shall gnash their teeth in despair the desire of the wicked shall perish. The righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance. Generous God, save us from the meanness 
that calculates its interest and hoards its earthly gain. As we have freely received, so may we freely give. In the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first Bible reading this morning is taken from the second book of Kings. Chapter 18, verse 13 to the end. Now the promised land has been split into two kingdoms, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. And by the end of this book, both parts both parts, both north and south. They experienced dreadful hardship. And many people have been taken away as captives to foreign lands. And despite this dark and sad reality at that time in the history of God's people, God has not forgotten his people and his covenant promises still stand firm. And in chapter 18, after this very sad part of, of history, Hezekiah has become king of Judah and he trusts God and he rebels against the Assyrians. And this, some of the challenges that we're experiencing across our world today, I think resonate in some ways here. Yeah. So without further ado, second book of Kings. Chapter 18. 13 to the end. In the 14th year of King Hezekiah, King Sennacherib of Assyria came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. King Hezekiah of Judah sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong. Withdraw from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will bear. The king of Assyria demanded of King Hezekiah of Judah 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. At that time, Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the doorposts that King Hezekiah of Judah had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria sent the Tartan, the Rabsaris, and the Rabshaka, with a great army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. They went up and came to Jerusalem. When they arrived, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper Jerusalem, of the upper pool, which is on the highway to the Fuller's Field. When they called to the king there, when they called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim and Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, and Shebna, the secretary and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder. The Rabshakeh said to them, say to Hezekiah, thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, on what do you base this confidence of yours? Do you think that mere words are strategy and power for war? 
on whom do you now rely, that you have rebelled against me? See, you are relying now on Egypt, that broken reed of staff, of a staff which will pierce the hand of anyone who leans on it, such as Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who rely on him. But if you say to me, we rely on the Lord our God, it is not he whose high places and altars Hezekiah has removed, saying to Judah and to Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Come now, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses. If you are able on your part to set riders on them. How then can you repulse a single captain among the least of my master's servants? When you rely on Egypt, for chariots and for horsemen. Moreover, it is without the Lord that I have come up against this place to destroy it. The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah and Shebna and Joah, said to the Rabshakeh, please speak to your servants in the Arabic, Aramaic language, for we understand it. Do not speak to us in the language of Judah, within the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But the Rabshakeh said to them, has my master sent me to speak these words to your master and to you and not to the people sitting on the wall who are doomed with you to eat their own dung and to drink their own urine? Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah and Shebna and Joah said to the Rabshakeh, please speak to your servants in the Aramaic language, for we understand it. Do not speak to us in the language of Judah without within the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But the Rabshakeh said to them, has my master sent me to speak these words to your master and to you, and not to the people sitting on the wall who are doomed with you to eat their own dung and to drink their own urine? Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah, hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you out of my hand. Do not let Hezekiah make you rely on the Lord by saying, the Lord will surely deliver us. And this city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, make your peace with me and come out to me. Then every one of you will eat your own vine and your own fig tree and drink water from your own system until you come and take, until I come and take you away to the land like your own land, a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive oil and honey, that you may live and not die. Do not listen to Hezekiah when he misleads you by saying the Lord will deliver us. Has any of the gods of the nations ever delivered its land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Serevrain, Hina and Ivra? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the, the gods of the countries has delivered their countries out of my hand? And the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. But the people were silent and answered him not a word. For the king's command was, do not answer him. Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, and Shebna, the secretary, and Joah and Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him, the words of the Rab Shaka. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
our second reading this morning, our New Testament reading, is taken from Philippians 2, verses 1 to 13. That's Philippians 2, 1 to 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being of the same accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfless ambition or conceit, but by humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to, to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name, the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. For the word of the Lord, we give thanks to God. Two very powerful readings there. I'm now going to read the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah, and please feel able to join me. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies and the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you shall go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation for the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. I'm now going to share some intercessions, some intercessory prayer. And let us start with our mission prayer for growth, which is so important. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, Send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, 
wisdom to our actions and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you and in service to our community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift our prayers to you, the people everywhere, those close to us, and Lord, also those far away. Lord, we pray for our worldwide church, for the Church of England here and further afield, and we ask for your help to grow in faith, Lord. Lord, help us also to respect the beliefs of others, even if we do not share them, to celebrate what we have in common and to accept our differences. Lord, guide us in our ministries as we live each day determined to spread the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, look with compassion on the whole human family and take away the arrogance and the hatred that infects the hearts of those who pursue violence, Lord, war, terrorism. Lord, help us break down the walls that separate us and unite us in bonds of love, in bonds of peace. And we pray today, Lord, for the peacemakers throughout the world. May they bring hope out of despair, peace out of conflict, and prosperity out of poverty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those close to us and those we know and love, and those we are supporting in so many different ways who are experiencing difficulties at this time, whether it be the mind or the body, Lord, or the spirit or a combination of these, Lord. We pray for those people. And we know, Lord, that it's not so often them, it's them and us. We all experience difficulties, Lord. Help us to support each other within our communities. And Lord, we pray for those who have died, particularly those who have died recently, Lord. And those who are by years mine. Let us take a moment of silence as we think of those close to us who we have loved. And who have now moved, moved on to heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for young people. We pray for those who have recently started school and college and university, Lord. Those, who, those who've recently started work for the first time, Lord. And we pray that they may grow, grow up and hold a love for you. And hope for the future, valuing life, Lord and respecting each other. Lord, 
help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. and the collect for the day. God, our maker and redeemer, we pray you of your great mercy and by the power of your holy cross to guide us by your will and to shield us from our foes. That after the example of your servant Alfred, we may inwardly love you above all things through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining me this morning and I wish you a wonderful remainder of your week and a peaceful, safe and happy week ahead and weekend. God bless. <laughs>